Hi, my name is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and recently I was asked by a friend of mine if I would recover her seat cushions for her leather sofa. And as you can see, the word leather was used rather loosely. It was more like pleather. But anyway, she has decided to do the covers in this fluffy fabric. So I will be showing you how to make funky, fluffy seat cushions for a sofa. Before I start cutting and measuring for this project, I need to find out how pliable the foam is. And I can push this, fold this up and maneuver it quite well. So I have a plan. I need to be able to expose this and we're limited on the amount of fabric that we've got. Having determined that the cushion is quite spongy, we can wriggle it around. I'm going to measure to about four inches underneath to the back, which is 36 inches. I'm going to go from the seam here to the seam on the other side, which is uh, 24 and a half inches. I've got three cushions, so I need to cut three. Uh, it's double-sided, so it's already got seams on it, which is and isn't a little bit irritating and we'll find out why in a minute so i'm going to cut the front to back to 36 inches and the reason i'm not going to add on um, seam allowance is because i've already got a sewn seam here and it won't matter if it's a little bit sharp i might have to do this by reverse measurements here's my 36 I'm going to pop there. I'm actually going to measure from the pin to the back, which is 12 and a half. So I'm actually going to take 12 inches off and smooth it out as I go. It's a weird way of doing it, but it's going to, it will work. 12 inches straight across. Something you should remember is when you're cutting fluffy fabric, you actually only go through the back of the fabrics. So let me cut that. As I pull this up, I see the, the fabric there. I'm just gonna cut along the back. And I'll show you what I did to start off with. You end up with short pieces and you don't really want to have too many short pieces. If it's a double-sided fabric, keep uh, trying to get it into shape. The whole idea is that you pull it apart like this. The fluff isn't quite as uh, singular strand. And that's okay, we'll, we'll work something out. I'm gonna do that all the way across. Now, usually I'd only do one layer of fabric, but I'm not sure how much of the feeling of the roughness from this would come through and also we're not wasting anything if we use both parts. I'm going to be using this for the sides and the back. Cut this up the centre so the easiest way to find the centre is to fold it and clip it so that's what I'm going to do. And the reason is I actually don't want to be, I only want one finished edge on here, I'm going to cut the second one off. So that looks like it's going to be about 29 and a half inches so that's what I'm going to do I know I only need 24 but I'm really not going to be saving very much if I do it the other way so I'm going to just cut that up just kind of shake it out and move it along as you go straight up because it's two separate fabrics and it's been washed a while they've probably uh, against each other and that's probably some problem here. Okay, keeping the two fabrics together, I'm not going to worry too much that that side is a little bit wonky. Um, I'm going to cut up here at uh, 25 and a half inches and then hopefully it will straighten everything out. Right, I'm going to repeat this two more times. Now I've got the three tops cut out and I need to measure up for the sides and I'm going to take it from the seam there and then at least three to four inches in so I'm going to actually 
I'm going to cut them at 10 inches. So it will it will pull up a little bit, but it should cover it. Now this is the first piece I cut off. And I know I cut it to 12, but I'm just gonna trim it back to 10 inches. And you'll see the method in my madness shortly. Now I know it's not gonna be very straight because the lines are actually quite wobbly, but I'll do it as straight as I can. Right. Now for each of these tops, I'm going to pull it to the back about half an inch from the back seam and across the front and I'm going to mark on each side where the where the fold is. So there's one there. Hold it up at an angle. So that one is on that edge and the bottom one is here. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to just mark where that one is, just like quarter of an inch in from the front to the back. There's my mark. That's a bit off at the back, but anyway, let's do this. There. So both of them are the same. That's where this this line is here. And again, from the bottom up, mark that again. So I've got both points on the front there and then it all just comes out to the back like that I'm going to use this to mark up the other two so I know exactly where everything has to flow to having transferred all the markings from here from the these two we're just going to double check the whole length to make sure that it is in line just in three places should work. It's a little bit short, but that will pull out. And that's fine as well. Perfect. Before I start sewing any of the sides on, I'm going to actually unpick these sides, just the side seams, not the bottom. I'm going to leave that in. I need as much fabric as I can possibly get out of this project. And do it as carefully as you can you don't want to nick anything that you don't need to put a hole through just like that all the way down I'm going to start this on a number three and I'm going to put the side fabric on the underside I'm not going to start sewing at my first mark I'm going to start sewing at my second mark which is here and I'm going to put that about half an inch in from the outside edge. And I'm going to start on that corner and push all the fluff that I can underneath. Now I might need to redo that, that end, but I'm hoping I won't. I'm going to sew it at about half an inch from the outside edge in. I'm going to start with a, on a number three stitch length, forward and back and then forward again and I'm just going to line all four lengths of fabric up. Now if this, if anything crinkles don't worry too much as long as you've got it as smooth as you can that's all that counts. And I'm going to work towards this back corner, fluff down on both sides just so that I can see the outside edges of the fabrics. Everything just has to be as even as you possibly can and as smooth as you possibly can. Fluffy fabric's quite something to use. I haven't used fluffy fabric in a long, long time. I tried to avoid it because it makes my face itch. Now the reason why we push all the fab all the fluff into the, in the seams so that you have a smooth line. And when we get to the top corner, I'm going to cut into the border, needle down first so I can lift the foot. And I'm going to cut from the outside edge in towards the needle at a 45 degree angle. And that should be both the top and bottom fabrics, which it which it is. 
foot. So I'll drop the foot, do one, two more stitches, lift the foot up and twist the fabric around the back. Now, sometimes the easiest way is to push the bottom fabric out of the way, so forward, and then pull the top fabric back towards you. And here again, just try to get all of that fluff down into the cushion. When you've done that and got it level, just lower your foot again. Keeping it as close as you can to uh, a half inch border still. So this takes a little bit of time. Make sure everything's going where it needs to go. I'm going to be running out of border in a while, hopefully not too soon. I'll say I need as much as I can, otherwise I've got to uh, be very creative. Make sure your corners are even. And again, cut in at a 45 degree angle from the outside corner into where the needle position will be. It doesn't have to be exact. As again, push the under forward and the top towards you. Put that down. And so towards the end, which is here. So I'm going to undo, I'm going to be undoing this seam here in a sec so that we can get it as long as possible. Get a little bit closer. I thought I would have to join a separate piece to this, but I was hoping it would be a bit further along. I'm going to join two pieces of the border. So I'm going to put the hem to the hem or the base to the base. Slide it underneath, forward and reverse, just to hold it, and then work all the way to the top. Just try to keep everything in line, which is a little difficult, as I keep saying, because of all this fluff. And it won't matter on this one if I leave everything sticking out. It just makes sure everything's going to be caught by this by the stitching. Next thing to do on there, because you're going to cut some of this fluff off is to pop the foot down and put it on an over put it on the over stitch that you've been using or will be using run the inside of the foot along the stitch line that's usually that's how I do it and then I don't have to worry about anything else and I don't use a zigzag I use one that's like um it's got two or three stitches across and then a zig a zigzag and then two or three stitches. It just um, helps enforce the stitch line. Then you can trim back the excess so it looks nice and neat. Not that anybody's going to care. You'll just know that you did it properly. Now if you had a an overlocker you could do it. You could do it all in one go, but I don't. I used to, but I, I found out I didn't really use it enough, often enough to warrant keeping it. I'm going to then pop the whole thing underneath. This doesn't matter which way it goes, as long as it's under there, I'll probably, you know, let it fall the way it wants to. Slide it underneath. Over sewing by about an inch on the stitches you've already put in and carry on going. Put it on a straight stitch again. My straight stitch is about number th 3.5. I've got the border almost in completely, but I need to allow for the difference here. This is the front border on the front of the cushion. So what I'm going to do is lay all of this out flat. I'm going to fold my front border down to that mark. It's a little bit difficult to see with all this fluff here, but it comes to about here. And then I'm going to roll this into place. So that comes level with there. And uh, I'm going to push that. I would do it by measuring it usually, but with all this fluff going on it's a little bit deceptive so I'm going to just eyeball it. There's my mark here so that's where that is and then it comes over half an inch so there is my mark here. 
I'm going to straighten all of this out. So I've got it all laid out flat. I'm going to measure up to that mark, which is 12 and three quarter inches. So I'm going to just cut down 12 and three quarter inches in a straight line. Now, this might not be exact, but this fabric is rather forgiving, so I'm going to be able to get away with it. Now I'm going to slip that back underneath with the top up and the border down still. I'm going to re-sew over my stitching and I'm actually going to pre-cut my corner in like that. So there it, there it goes. So towards the corner, lift the foot and leave the needle down and twist everything. That finishes about right. Now push all of the fluff in this case back. You, normally you don't have to worry about it. And I'm just going to sew to the bottom border again. Now this lining here is a little bit longer than the actual top fabric. Don't worry about that. When you're upcycling things, you sometimes have to allow for differences. So let's go to the bottom. When you get to the bottom, just reverse it and forward. Now comes the fun part. I'm placing the front border of the top face down and the side border face up. Both of the bottoms that are going to tuck underneath the uh, underneath the seat cushion. And I'm just going to sew up towards my first notch. Now when I get to the top, I've just got to keep an eye on everything because as I say, everything is so fluffy. It disappears. And again, cut in at a 45 degree angle from the outside corner into where the needle position will be. As again, push the under forward and the top towards you. And pop that down. I'm going to put this, the seat cushion on, on upside down because I need to make alterations to it. The Where it rolls like this goes at the front, so there's that. And where it wraps around, it goes at the back. On the corners, I need to pull it in and do a 45 degree angle. What I do is I, I line up that bottom border and that bottom border and pull it right in like that nice and tight you might alter the back slightly but not too much I'm just going to put two pins in these might need to be altered shortly but that's okay It'll, you know it's a start the same again pull it down tight pull my corners in to a 45 degree angle make sure the bottom's pulled in and repeat now the front actually needs a little bit more attention again along that border and actually you've got you've already got the border in here so pull it to 45 degree angles pull that in tight the tighter you get it the more firm it will be and stay in place and the same on the fourth corner now there we go what you will notice is this is a little bit loose still and We'll sort that out in a sec. Usually you just put a little, you put your finger up and just catch. It's probably only about half an inch. Pleat, put one in there. And the same a little ways down, just about half an inch to one inch taken in. And you're just going to sew that for a couple of inches. Having done that, you turn it back up the other way. Now the back's going to just pull in, that's not a problem, but this needs to be rounded off slightly. So I'm going to pull back a few inches, pin that round, and it will pleat in just a little bit, and then down to the front like this. This will just be re-sewn in, and the same on this. Okay, so my new side has been pinned in, and it comes in slightly, and then and then round that corner. So in a minute I'll just re-sew re that in that side and in on this side. That's quite normal. As I say, 
this is not usually how I do seat cushions it's the way I have to do it for this style of seat cushion when you want to remove this from the seat cushion because it's only pinned in my advice is take the pins out but carefully put them back where you're taking them from so that side I'm just going to pop there that opens that up and this one I'm going to pop back there and then you can easily slip it off when you put it on because the stitching holds it you won't have to worry about it pulling or falling out or anything personally I like to start on the outside edge when I sew these things together so my edge is here I'm going to pull that one out because it's on the underside pop it down I'm going to do a 45 degree angle across here so let's get started. I'm going to do fours and reverse and then straight to this corner here. Once I've got my angle on it, I don't worry too much. Get to the end, for reverse and forward. Then I'm going to put, pop it down and do the over stitch, reverse over. And then what I'm going to do is chop on the outside of that corner off so it takes the bulk out of the bottom of the chair not that it's going to make any difference at all but uh, I just don't like leaving stuff in there that doesn't need to be left in there now this is the corner I took out line my pin up there's my pin there with that corner there and pop it underneath and here again, I'm just going to do a 45 degree angle here. Now on the front corner, that is slightly different because I'm actually going to go from here all the way through. So I'm going to pop that underneath, starting where I had been stitching. And I'm not sure why, but I didn't put them the right way up. So let's go this way. Now when you go around, just pull the border fabric forward a little bit so it doesn't make too many crinkles. Not that it's going to matter or show up because it will And it's not going to do you any harm to carry on on this border here where you've already sewn. Okay. Now when you get to the top of your 45 degree angle, put your needle down lift the fabric, aim it across your 45 degree angle to finish where you need to. And we're kind of working our way around this project so the next ones I'm going to do are these tiny ones at the front. This just helps the fabric go from straight to a curve because the front border is slightly curved around. But not much, so as I say, you don't need to put too much in. Just put your fingers in the back here and make sure that both fabrics are lined up. Because sometimes the top fabric will roll, or the underside fabric will roll out. This is just like doing darts in dressmaking. You'll find that dressmaking skills come quite in handy for this particular job. Okay, and now my last corner, and I'll show you why I do it this way in a minute. Let's pull that one out there because it goes in here. Do my 45 and you get to the, your previous line of stitching. Drop your needle down. So up the line of stitching and then when you get to the top front corner where it's rounded start easy and if you get it wrong just pull it out because it's not going to make any difference just make sure all of your fabric is going away from where you want to be sewing it now starting on the front border here on your first 45 degree angle put the stick foot down Dial up your overstitch and then just carry on sewing until you get to the end. OK, 
Okay, having sewn all the way around, I'm coming to the end. I'm just going to ease it round like I did the other corners. Although the first corner I showed you to leave the needle down and to uh, pick the foot up, you actually don't need to with this stitch. You can just put it round and then over stitch. With that all done, all you've got to do now is trim back to the to the outside of the decorative stitch or the the uh, over stitch, and trim off all around the seam excess like this. Just when. Uh, the chair cover's in use, it just means there shouldn't be so much fraying if you do this. It should hold, get rid of all the loose ends and hold it firm. Now I've finished the cover and I'm going to show you how to put it on. The front border has no stitching in really, so we'll pop, pop that over like that. Oops. Pull it into its corners. You'll, you'll work out where they are. Pull them into the corners. Right, now to get the back in, this is when you end up with a bit of a workout. It's hooked on at the front. And now we're just going to push the corner into there, like that. Twist it. And push this corner into there, like that. That's all you've got to do. And then just wriggle it until it's on nice and tight. And there it is your fluffy seat cover. I think this is going to look quite fun in her living room. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, unusual project. I hope I've been able to impart some useful information to you, gain some insight into making a different style of cushion cover, uh, to use the fabrics other than the usual upholstery fabrics. If you have any queries, please write to me and I'll see if I can answer them. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to see more from me and a couple of thumbs up might be rather useful too. Take care, see you later, ciao! I'm going to enjoy washing all of this dust off my face, it's, uh, it's quite irritating. That's the only, the only problem I find with some things, they just irritate my face. Um,